My name is Edouard Nate. I'm the CEO of a young company called Fox Intelligence. Um, we're located in Paris. We're 25 now. Uh, and yes, we're two years old. Um, what we do is a bit special. Uh, we know every revenues of any online companies. So you take Amazon, you take Uber, you take Deliveroo, you take any company online, we know the revenues uh, for now in France. The way we do it is we gather, we anonymize billions in real time of e-receipts. E-receipt is the email you get in your inbox, in your email box when you purchase something online. I purchase these shoes, I get an email saying, Edouard purchased these shoes at this time for this price, et cetera, et cetera. And um, the good thing is we've got a million people in France who gave us access to their email accounts, allowing us to know exactly the revenues of any companies uh, selling something online in France, and we're going to be doing this in Europe in the coming weeks, months, and, uh, and years. Um, just if you have the question, how can this guy convince a million people to give, them, give us access to, uh, to their email accounts? Well, we offer them services, we offer them money uh, by doing smart things. So one example, um, uh, train delays. Every time you have a train that, that, that is late, we know it because based on your email account, based on your tickets that are in your mailbox, we know that this train was late and we can do the claim for you. So this is one of the ways we use to convince people to give us access to their anonymized receipt to their email accounts. Well, so that's what we do, but this is not what I want to talk to you about. Uh, I want to talk to you about something that uh, came up quite quickly in the building of this company about data. And the point is this one. It's impossible to solve any of the keys, key issues of our times. Uh, I don't know, climate change, poverty, uh, women's conditions, access to medication, to education. Um, if we don't have access to publicly available, reliable, and transparent data, it's impossible. Uh, you can't run the diagnostic if you don't have the data. You can't uh, design your solution if you don't have the data. You can't test your um, decisions uh, and the impact of your measures if you don't have data. Now, the good thing, and this is something that we both, I mean, everyone here lives um, every day, is we have the tools to do it. We have computing power. We have the science. It's called data science. We have the people and skills. It's called data scientist. And, and that works super well. The bad thing is uh, we're human beings. And human beings have two flows. Uh, the first one is we love uh, being slaves and we love, or we love enslaving people. That's the first one. The second flow is we have a major issue with accountability. We have a major issue with being held accountable for the things we do. So I'm gonna skip the first part because we, you all know what, what I wanna talk about, which is the, the rise of the freedom ideology for the last three centuries, which is now even defining who we are, the free world. Um, and I want to focus on the second part, which is our issue with accountability. Um, just going to make a small philosophical uh, aparté on this, which is if you take morality, the first attempt to codify morality, which is religion, it's full of this human tendency of always putting your blame on something else. It's called scapegoating. You put the blame on a goat, and you kick it away. It's not your responsibility anymore. Or you can do a sacrifice, or do whatever you want, but we don't like to be held accountable for what we do. And one of the consequences of that is people who do not want to be held accountable usually don't create data points and don't share data points that would show what they do. So, um, if I'm a company and I don't want to say that I've got only men in my board of director, I'm not going to put it in my annual report. I'm not going to do it. And now the, the, the cool thing and, and, and what I'm really hoping for is that transparency becomes the default mode. So it means that leaders, uh, individuals, institutions, they naturally start feeling themselves accountable for each and every, each of the things they do. And this is something that I'm gonna take a very small example that works super well in our company. In our company, each table, so each team has a table, and each table has waste uh, as a trash bin. And we measure how much trash, how much waste has been produced by each table. And we publish the number. 
And the fact that we published this number, first we realized that some table would generate twice as much waste as another table, and it's the same human beings working, eating, drinking, etc. But when you start putting these numbers, then people start to realize, maybe I should change my behavior. And so introducing data points in everyday life is uh, something that drives change. Um, so my final point on it is what I feel as a responsibility as a small, young leader of my company, but that applies way more to uh, big governments and, and big company leaders, is that, first of all, you should always put your transparency mode as the default mode. mode. And the second thing is, everywhere it's possible, everywhere it's not um, against privacy and personal information, um, you should always try to, I mean, we should always try to find a way to be accountable for what we do, because that's the only way towards change. Thank you.